Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze and interview straight from the heart of San Francisco. This is Aaron. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us every Monday, 5.30 to 6 a.m. at bff.fm. Uh, we have a special, finally, we can release an interview <laughs> that we've had in the hopper for a minute. Uh, it's a special uh, interview with the director of the um, film Harriet about Harriet Tubman. The only feature film that has ever been released about Harriet Tubman, if you can believe that. Her name's Casey Lemons. And we also have the fabulous producer that uh, saw the script and and, uh, saw Casey uh, attached to it and gave her some money to get this done. Her name's Daniela Taplin Lundberg. So enjoy this interview and please support Harriet the film and we'll see you on the other side. I'm so honored to welcome the director and screenplay writer, uh, Casey Lemons, um, and also the producer, Daniela Taplin Lundberg of Harriet, on the show. Um, first of all, I'm going to apologize publicly for not knowing enough or not knowing that much about Harriet Tubman. It's an embarrassment. And I know the Q&A at Mill Valley the other evening, Zoe Elton, who I, who's the director of programming at Mill Valley, I, I hold in the highest regard. And I'm like, if she doesn't know the story about Harriet Tubman, then no one knows, really. Can you talk about um, maybe how this is feeling while you're rolling out this film, and if this is what you're getting um, every time you do Q&As? Is this the question you're getting or the statement that you're getting? Because it feels very familiar. Like, everyone I talk to about Harriet Tubman, they're like, I kind of know, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny. When when I first read the script um, five years ago, my partner, Deborah Martin Chase, gave me the script, which Greg Howard had originally written 20 years ago. and um, a, I couldn't believe there wasn't a movie about this already, but the general concept of this young, you know, activist, someone who just like was powerful and courageous and um, and could not read or write, had epilepsy, um, went back down for her family after she escaped slavery herself. Um, I didn't know many of those details. I knew a little bit about the Underground Railroad, um, and so Deb and I both felt like, oh wow, this is this is going to be an incredible thing to tell the world if we can manage to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, we brought on Cynthia Revo, who was such a natural fit physically, just a talent. Also had the voice of an angel. Angel really was like exactly the right fit. And then, really, it was when Casey came on about two and a half years ago and sort of steeped herself in the research. Mm. She said, "If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it with integrity. I'm going to do incredible research, and I'm going to be as accurate." as I can be while telling a really dramatic story. Mm -hmm. So it was her six months of research that sort of informed the script in the way that it is now. There's a whole mystical element um, and and all sorts of things we didn't know. And so it was really, she's become the expert. You're also a professor. So yes. this is, you know, this is right up <laughs> her alley, alley, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. I'm a little bit of an um, American historian, you know, um, I, but different, little different slivers of it. Um, and now I, I think I'm kind of become a Harriet Tubman historian, but um, <laughs> I really didn't know. I thought I knew. And mm-hmm. when I started doing the research, Um, I knew that there was more than was in Greg's script, but as I started doing the research and I really thought, oh, wait a minute, the the actual story is more interesting um, than than what you could make up. I mean, you know, this story is so rich and vivid and kind of um, unbelievable, but that's the Harriet Tubman story. And that, in fact, if you were trying to tell it another way without those elements, you wouldn't be telling the Harriet Tubman story. And because it, um, at first there's like, are you going to lean towards that? Or are you going to be scared of it? Um, there, there, there are reasons why I lean towards that stuff. But, um, <laughs> but also it was super interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for instance, one of the one of the things that struck me right away, and I'm like, why isn't this in the script? Is that um, you know she prayed after she after she hired a lawyer to try and prove that they were free and that her, her mother should have been freed at, 40, at 45, um, she had this incredible relationship with her family and, and her, 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 this guy that owned her. But they were, um, you know, he was definitely an antagonist and they were terrible to her and more than I could even mm. put in this script. It was, it was a very, very cruel form of slavery. Mm-hmm. He destroyed this paper as if it had never been presented to him. And um, 
she prayed for him to die. Mm -hmm. And a week later, he was dead. <laughs> and to the point where she felt guilty and was like, oh my God, if I could take it back. And I thought that that was kind of unbelievable, but like, wow, why wouldn't I, you know, why would why was Totally, that, so dramatic. Know, so, so it's like so that. dramatic. And, and, and the story about her family and the story of enslaved people living next to free people mm -hmm. and her husband being free and her being enslaved and her father being free and her mother being enslaved and, and three of her sisters having been sold off, um, you know, and I, I mean, I thought that the details were so rich. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I wanted to put in, even though, and of course the faith mm -hmm. and the seizures and the visions mm -hmm. and the, um, so I really wanted to, even though it's daunting and there's an element of, um, wow, they're just making the shit up, it was actually the Harriet Tubman story. Yeah. And so that, that was like a, um, just this, this gift box, you right. know. Can you talk a little more about the research? I mean, how long did they give you to look up, you know, all of these things and put the story together? And what does that look like? Because I know you're on a tight time frame when you have to, when you have your producers in and you're casting, but there's also this rich history that you don't want to miss. Well, I had to figure out the story. I mean, I really did, did have to figure out the script. I understood what was great about Gregory's script about, um, you know, but I really wanted it to be the Harriet Tubman story. Yeah. And um, I was able to do about seven months of pure research. Wow. And I would present treatments and, and ideas along the way, but I was really researching and I read everything. I read all the, the three major biographies and and um, all everything that every scholarly thing that had been written about her and the Underground Railroad. And um, I took it very, 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 very seriously. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I was kind of building this relationship with her, you know, mm -hmm. that on a more spiritual level that I was able to, that I found this is me. This is just, that's just me. Um, I felt that I was able to um, talk to her directly. Mm -hmm. I think I think the complexity of the stories, in fact, how... Um, broad reaching it is and h how much detail there was in in like in her in her life and like how much we were trying to pack into a film mm -hmm. and at one point I you know my company I was going to go out and raise the money independently mm -hmm. meaning we would have no distributor and it would be like just a totally risky endeavor mm -hmm. um, with potentially no hope of return on investment mm -hmm. and so you know, when you're trying to tell a film with this much scope, but you know you only have this much money right. in the worst case scenario, you have to figure out a way to cull down the story and make it manageable and also see the arc of a character going from a slave girl to Moses, you mm -hmm. know? And so mm -hmm. we, you know, she did all this research and then our job sort of became, well, okay, Casey, this is incredible. Right. This is a hundred million dollar <laughs> film that could be eight hours long, you <laughs> right. know? Yeah. Right. Let's like, let's try to like hone it down a little bit. What can we actually manage and do effectively? Mm -hmm. And so that became the dynamic for a few months until we got a script that we were like, okay, this is ready. Yeah. And then she was like, all right, you said if we did this, we were going to shoot in six months. Yeah. And we were. We did. We ended up <laughs> making incredible. that happen. Um, can we talk about how long this came to pass? Because I was reading about Gregory Allen Howard, mm -hmm. who wrote the original right, screenplay, yep. and that was in the 90s. Yep. And it was under like Disney projects or Disney something. Project. Yeah. And then um, he was basically told or felt that it, there had to be a climate of change to really produce this and, and put yeah. this out there. Yep. And here we are yeah. in 2019. It happened. Yeah. Um, what was his impetus for it to actually? I, I, I have to give click. it to Greg because he, he wrote this. Conceptually, he came up with this idea of Harriet Tubman as this badass activist, young woman, mm -hmm. young woman in 1996 and he pitched it to Disney That's and they crazy. did pay for them for him to write it and then it lay dormant there <laughs> mm -hmm. for 20 years at and Disney at Disney wow yeah oh and so <laughs> um he brought it to Deb and Deb brought it to me and and I was someone who came out of independent filmmaking you know I made Beasts of No Nation I made The Kids Are All Right mm -hmm. I make movies that you know mainstream Hollywood typically isn't mm -hmm. willing to take the risk on mm -hmm. at a lower price point mm -hmm. so I think together um, we we 
Deb's been on this for seven years. I came on five years ago. And even five years ago, the climate was different, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yep. And it's incredible how much has changed over the last few years that we could actually convince a studio to come onto it last year. And, mm -hmm. and they would really feel like, oh, this is a potentially commercial and viable project. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were lucky. We had projects like Hidden Figures that had come before right, us right. with, you know, African-American leads. Um, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman had come out. Out. That was a movie that really worked, that had a female lead. And so there were a couple things we could point to that said, if we do this right and we tell this in the uplifting way that Casey wants it to be told, this mm -hmm. could be a really big movie that everyone comes to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it is timing. Yeah. It's it's fortunate and unfortunate yes. a little bit. Yes, mm -hmm. the music in the film um, is an emotional uh, roller coaster as well. Mm. And um, Cynthia Erivo, mm -hmm. correct the the lead, who's Harriet. Her voice is magic. Mm -hmm. It is it's. It's on a whole other level. And then to slide in a little Nina Simone also oh, into the film. Yes. Loved it. Um, can you talk about the music in the film a little bit? It's Because it's another character, obviously. Yeah, it was really important to the Harriet Tubman story. So mm -hmm. once again, this is from Harriet herself. She, those were the songs she actually sang to call to the slaves. You know, those were the songs so that those songs were authentic to her story and her singing is a part of the story. And so the interesting thing with Cynthia that she and I talked about a lot was where Harriet's voice was placed as opposed to where Cynthia's voice is. Mm -hmm. okay. So in, in taking the Cynthia out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and allowing it to be Harriet, which Cynthia was so ready for. I mean, she was so available to just step out of the way and allow the performance to come through her. And so her, her singing is pure communication. It's unadorned, her, her Harriet voice. But her Harriet voice is very different than her Cynthia voice you hear at the end of the movie with mm. the, the, the oh. end title song, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's Cynthia, this amazing range and this amazing voice. But the music, I didn't want it to feel musical, like a musical. I right. wanted it yeah. to feel like this was this was a part of this time and this was a part of these people and this was an important form of communication that was essential to her story and how she called to the enslaved people, now's the time to run, meet me over here. Mm -hmm. You know, let's do this. And so, um, you know, really important to me. When I was working on the script and talking about the story just to my family, mm -hmm. um, one day, and this is a true story, I don't know if I've said this before, one day Hunter said to me, listen to Cinnamon. I didn't know it Hunter. Hunter. Hunter said to me, listen to this, and I started listening to, he said, Mom, I think this is your movie. Oh, wow. And I started I was listening to, to Cinder Man, the long version. It's like 14 minutes long. Yeah. And I was like, this has this propulsion and this energy and this soul, and this is the way I want it to feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, everybody that came on board, I made them listen to Cinder Man. Mm -hmm. So when, when I first reached out to Terrence, I'm like, Terrence, I've been listening to Cinder Man, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so that was so that that when the score and the music came together, it kind of came together in kind of an organic fashion because that was it was there from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. And and um, the production designer had him listen to Cinnamon, and you know, that was the energy. It was the, the soul plus the 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 movement. Yeah. Of it. It worked. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I was really excited by that. Well, it's so interesting because it really is the one contemporary piece in, yes. in the film. Yeah. And it fits so seamlessly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that is the scene that people talk to us about mm -hmm. over and over and over again because it's really where she becomes Moses mm -hmm. and she like fully embraces all her powers, you know? And that song, I think like that song, Casey would say like, this is what's inspired the script. And it like was the song that inspired Casey's powers as a writer, you know? Yeah. And so, it's risky, but it totally yeah, works. Yeah, it really is. It's so great. Yeah. We were a part of the Mind the Gap Summit over the mm -hmm. weekend at Mill Very Valley cool. and I, each of your panels loved, loved, loved. Um, what has been the advice that you've been giving to filmmakers over the, the course of the weekend? Because I'm sure, I think you were a part of two different mm -hmm. panels, but yeah. what's some of the advice you're giving out right now? I mean, I, you know, from my perspective now, and listen, I've been doing this, we both have, but I've been producing for 17 years. I started producing right when I got out of college, and um, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I mean, the first film I produced was like a, a veritable disaster, you know, and... 
Um, but I did it. I showed up for work. I, I got there early. I stayed late. I figured out how, you know, I remember the first time I negotiated a, a cast deal, an agent got on the phone and was like, oh, is it scale plus 10? And I had no idea what that meant. And that just means <laughs> like you pay the minimum amount plus 10%. And I, I faked it. <laughs> and I always say like, be, be bold, go, you know, if you don't know how to produce, like go just try and you know, get with your group of people, with your group of fellow students, go make a little short film. Like a lot of the way that I learned to do this was just um, sort of stumbling and then picking myself back up, you know, and now I can say, oh, I'm the producer of Harriet. It's a big studio film. It took me 17 years to get here. Mm -hmm. And I made so many mistakes along the way. So I'm always, I always just say, if you really want to do it, you're going to make mistakes. And mm -hmm. it's best, trial by fire is the best education. Mm -hmm. I'd say, um, first of all, make sure that it's something that you really want to yeah. do, that, you know, because it's very difficult. It's a difficult road. And then um, try and enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. That's what I tell my students. You've really got to enjoy the journey of being an artist and this being the way of life that you've chosen. <laughs> um, because there, there are a lot of elements about it that are... Um, you know, going to be challenging. But if you enjoy the journey and if you enjoy the act of communicating on that level of, of reaching out with a question that you want a kind of public answer to, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, then every day is, is a wonderful day and you don't have to, um, you're not so worried about, about the outcome. You're involved in the process of living that life. Mm. Well, thank you so much for being on Bitch Talk, Daniela and Casey. Thank, thank you, you for yeah. taking the time. That was fun. That was the director of Harriet, Casey Lemons, and the producer, Daniela taplin Lundberg, from the film Harriet. Did I just say that twice? No. Yes. I said Harriet twice. You did say Harriet twice. Cool. But, you know, Harriet's coming out today. Harriet is out. So go see Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we had the pleasure of watching it at the Mill Valley Film Festival. That's correct. Um, right after Ma Mind the Gap. That's correct. It was a very full day, everybody. Yeah. A very full day. You, you got a lot out of us that day. You got a lot out of us. Um, but it was all great. And um, Casey and Daniela were actually a part of two different panels. And Casey's panel was with another friend of the show Olivia Wilde that was a great panel and uh, Casey I think said fuck and they were also saying bitch a lot in that panel and that was leading into my panel so I'm like yes um, so I was really excited to speak with Casey and then um, Daniela is just like this powerhouse producer who's and she and her panel was with our other favorite person in the world oh yeah Emily Best Emily best, best best friend of the show best friend <laughs> best friend of the show best friend of the show she is the founder uh, and CEO of Seed, Seed and Spark yes and um, she was rad but yeah Harriet um, it's a really great film and I can't believe that there's never been a film uh, feature film made about Harriet Tubman and I had I learned a lot let's just say that oh I totally did I and you know the nitty-gritty about you know Harriet Tubman growing up you sort know, of like, you know it's like one page right you know but you know women's Maybe. suffrage and you yeah know, that you know those like the big the big general things right right the bullet the bullet points right and then you come in here and then it's just like it was almost like a like an action story yeah it's <laughs> you like, know? dude she was kicking ass and so it was super cool and and watching it, I like, yeah, I, I was thinking that it was just going to be kind of like a period piece that I was just going to. Right. But then I was kind of drawn. Different. I was drawn in and like, wow, like, yeah. holy crap, this is, you know, so uh, great film. And um, yeah, the acting, the uh, music, the star, the, the star, everything. Uh, awesome. Of that film uh, that plays Harriet. I'm going to find her really quickly. She I just, follow her on Instagram now. She was just on um, <laughs> Kelly and Ryan. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course she was. Cynthia Erivo, um, she's she's amazing. Yeah, uh, and she's, a, a, she's, she's British. Yes, she's British and has this powerful, beautiful singing voice. Right. Yeah, her song was featured at the very end and yep. then credits. Yeah. And really good, really good. I, re yeah. like, I really enjoyed this movie and it was... Nice to talk to both of them yeah. away from their panels because, you know, like we really did enjoy both of their panels. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're just really cool ladies. So doing really cool shit. So um, 
thank you so much for uh, coming on the show, uh, Casey and Daniela. And thank you, uh, our listeners, for listening to this interview. Please go out and support Harriet opening today in theaters. Uh, I think around the country. It's kind of a wide release. So go find that film. Um, If you are living in the Bay Area and need to get out of the smoke, go see this film this weekend. And um, you can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com. You can also find us at bff.fm every Monday morning from 530 to 6. We are powered by GoTo Productions. Bitch, please.